Hi guys, welcome to an episode of Luke's Garage. Today we're going to be having a look at CNCJS in the virtual world of my computer. So over time I've used a number of different G-code senders and personally I really like CNCJS. It's dead easy to use, it looks decent and it supports some pretty good uh, macros. And I'm going to show you how to use the software just so you've got a feel for how easy it is to use as I appreciate many of you will be using Carbide Motion and are very used to some pretty, pretty good functionality. Um, now the main reason why I recommend using this is because if you're using a HDZ, uh, Carbide Motion has a hard limit trick, hard limit um, enforced into the software, which you can't remove. So you have to use a spacer or you have to use any other software you want. Uh, and to be honest, with the additional macro functionality, I see this as being uh, quite a bit better than Carbide Motion. It's also developed regularly. This particular version is 1.9.18, and it was released uh, at the start of April. The previous release was about 15 days before that. Um, and that's not to say it's buggy, it's just they've added some cool new fun functions. So to start off with, Everything is based around a widget principle. In the center, you've got your um, visual view, but either side, you've got these widgets. Now, if I go to manage widgets, we can see uh, there's multiple selections. Some are standard, like the visualizer, you can't turn it off. You can't turn the connection widget off, but you can turn off, uh, say, a Marlin widget or a smoothie widget if you don't use it. There's a laser one, there's a spindle one. There's also some custom widgets. Now, if I just turn one off there's a spindle widget just here click OK he's gone and um, really nice and straightforward now to connect your machine the first thing you need to do is go to the connection widget and it might be um, collapsed like that it's going to expand it look in the port and look for something that says USB something as long as it's plugged in just click um, open it should connect if you can't see anything just click refresh and it should find that now you can have connect automatically, so as soon as you plug in your machine, it will connect. I've turned mine off. Now in my instance, I am using an Arduino Mega. I have not connected to a machine and I can't home. But typically, assuming you've got a hard limits enabled, the first thing you need to do is click homing. Now I can't do anything, so I'm just gonna reset and unlock. And that's gonna clear that alarm code. However, your machine should home. That's the first thing. That will then set the machine position to, uh, I think it's minus five. Nice and straightforward. Now, that's minus five on each axis because you know, you've got the offset from the limit switches. Now, we're gonna walk through all these widgets and have a look. The first one is gonna be console. And actually, if you wanted to change the gerbil setting, you can do in here. You can also see what's going on. So if I typed in, um, uh, let's say dollar one three two equals ten. I can change that setting. That's com that's complete now. So we're not going to do anything there. We're just going to collapse that. We've then got our G code, and this is essentially telling us what we can and can't. Uh, or this tells us real time information. So it's telling us things like the min, the max, the dimension, what's being sent, what's being received, etc. It also tells you the start time and elapsed time. Below that, we've got our real-time controls. So this is if you want to increase your feeds, your speeds, or decrease them. I, I don't know what R is. Um, I feel I should, but I don't know what it is. Below that, you've got your queue, your status reports, and then your modal groups. Over to the right, we've got our axes. So on the left, you've got your machine position. On the right, you've got your work position. So that shows you where you actually are. You then got your jog commands and you've got your increment. It's worth noting, you cannot press and hold like you do in carbide motion. So if you want to jog, you can select your increment and you can just click a button and you'll see it jogs. If you wanted to go and uh, reset zero at a certain point. So the work offset, click this button. And you can see we've set our work offset. You can 
also home each axis independently and you can make changes to an axis at a moment in time. You've also got a whole host of other options if you choose to use them. I don't use any of those. The one thing I do use in the axes widget is the keyboard functions. This allows you, let's get that back up, to use keyboard commands. And the one I particularly like, I can't go down, is Alt and Shift. It allows you to jog at 10 times or 0.1 times, uh, which is quite nice and useful. Um, anyway, it is. Uh, a really useful bit of kit. Uh, it's certainly something worth having a play with. Now, typically, what you would do is jog your machine to your workplace start and then reset the, the axes. Below that, we've got our macro functionality. So, to edit a macro or add a macro, you click the plus, give it a name, put the G code in. If you want to edit it, such as a um, uh, 30 millimeter above Z or your workplace Z, you can just edit and you can see there's the code, there's the name. Really straightforward. Now, I don't use the probe module, but you do have the option of using a Z probe here. I use my custom macros for uh, the whole probe. I've also got uh, semi-automated tool change commands, corner probes, the front middle of my machine, and then uh, 30 mil above workplace zero. So it's nice and straightforward, really. Um, you've got additional settings on most widgets. You know, you can add uh, additional, you can add a custom jog distance if you wanted to in inches. You can have custom commands within there. And then you've also got Shuttle Express. Um, I don't really know what that does. I've not played with it. Um, I use the very basics of the functionality. Now, when it comes to uploading your project, what I typically do is go to the upload and click on the file I want to upload. And this loads it here. And you can see we've got a 3D rendering. You can look at different views, which is pretty cool. And you can zoom around. We can move, or sorry, zoom to fit. Zoom out. All in, it's um it's nice. Now Typically what I would do is I would jog my machine to the correct position. And let's say my Z is going to be uh, here. So I'm going to start at the top piece of my work on the back or the front left. I then reset that. So I've got my work position and I'm essentially setting datum here. I then click on play. And then you can actually see the G code and what it's doing. You can see the work position or changing. You can see in the queue reports it's doing stuff. You can see the status report. And if we go to the G code, you've got this detail here. So, um, I mean, that's a, a very high level walkthrough of CNC.js. CNC JS. I hope that's been useful for you. And hopefully that will um, give you the, the kick you need to get using and start enjoying it. Thanks very much for watching and um, let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.